So to get started, um, I'm just going to walk everyone through the home page. So when you sign on to your account on Bridge, you'll see four different modules. And by modules, I'm talking about, oops, can you still see my screen? Yeah, everything still looks good. It might have changed because I, I turned my camera off. Okay, it like brought me back to a different one. Okay, if for some reason it clicks out of my screen, just let me know. Yeah, I'll let you know, I'll keep monitoring, don't worry. Okay. Um, so we have four different modules here. And by modules, I'm talking about like each different section. So the first one is Teams. Um, then we have Analytics, Members, and Library. So if you're a personal trainer, um, you might not have a ton of teams here. You might just have one or two like in-person training and remote training. Um, so if yours looks different than this, don't worry about it, but you can view all of your teams by clicking see all um, and it would show up under all teams, but let's go back. So if you wanna click on an actual team, it does kind of have its own mini home screen here that has a lot of information. Um, and then you can also view the roster for just that specific team under the team's module, which can be helpful if you're just trying to monitor a specific set of athletes or clients. Um, I'll say athletes here, just because that's the terminology that's throughout the website, but that means clients, patients, whatever you use for to term your users. Um, so that's where you can view the roster for an athlete, for athletes on a specific team. If you wanna see all of your users, then you can go to the bottom module where you see members um, and then see all. So this is a good place to manage if you wanna view all of your athletes. Um, and from here, you can also deactivate or reactivate athletes. So this is a super useful tool. If you have athletes, um, let's say they're just home for the summer and they're training in the summer and then they're gonna go back to school in the fall. Um, so you would edit and then hit deactivate. That way they're not taking up a spot on your active roster. And then when they return, you would go to the deactivated tab, edit, and then hit reactivate and it'll pull up all of their old information. So those are two places where you can um, manage your athletes. And then under analytics, um, this is where you can start reports. So you would click new report, um, bunch of different options here. A few to highlight would be the prescribed versus actual report. Um, so this will show what you prescribe to your athletes versus what they actually do. Um, and then leaderboard, test results, these are all different ways to see your athletes' data. So definitely click around in there. And then the more data that you have with your athletes, the more like the reports will pull. So if you're just starting out, you might not have a ton of data to pull from, but as your clients start to enter data, you'll be able to build some good reports there. Um, and then just to highlight the online store, so at the top right corner here, you'll see payments and store. So if you're not using this yet, we definitely recommend going in there and checking it out. Um, so on the online store, you can either sell programs to like users online, um, or you can actually like promote programs for free as well. So if you wanted people to just try out a program, um, you can have that listed for free and they can download a program of yours. So it's pretty self-explanatory as you start to click through. Um, I'll show you what ours looks like. Can you see the screen or did it? Yeah, we can see the, the team or the store page, yeah. So this is a sample store that we built for Bridge Athletic. Um, just to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. We definitely recommend using photos and then if you have your own logo, you can upload it here as well. Um, and then you would set your product, have a description and then set your price and users could go in and click on the program and buy it. Um, so to do that, you would just go to my products, upload a product by hitting create new product and then link it to an existing program. And from there you can set the price and everything. Um, so if you have more questions on that, definitely reach out. We have a ton of resources online for the online store, um, but just so that you know it's there. Okay, so this is the home page. We're gonna spend the majority of the time today working in the builder. Um, so if you haven't spent time in the builder yet, that is where you actually build your programs. So back to the home page. So to get to that, we're gonna go, go to the library. Um, 
You can also hit new program if you just want to jump right to building a new program from the home page. But I'm going to go into the library and kind of walk you through the library. Um, so on the side here, for each one, you'll see some different options. We have templates that are uploaded. Um, depending on which subscription you're on, you'll have a different amount of templates and different access to templates, but they'll show up on the side here. So if you just want to see the programs that you've built, um, you can toggle just to my programs, or if you want to see all of them, you'd click all programs, but you can kind of play around with it there. Um, another thing to highlight is the status. So this will show whether you're, you're seeing the programs that are unassigned, assigned, if they're a template, if, or if they're completed or on the online store. Um, so I do just want to highlight the completed tab because a lot of times people will write in that they can't find a program. So if you have a program that's set to calendar, once your athlete completes it, so if their last day was yesterday and they completed it, 24 hours later, it will get moved to the completed folder. Um, and that's not always toggled on. So if you can't find a program, chances are it was moved to completed. So once you tap completed, it'll show all the programs that were completed. Um, another thing is once it isn't completed, you can't edit the program, but you can clone it and then make edits and reassign it to an athlete. Um, so just a little tidbit there on the status. It also helps if you're like, if you don't like seeing all the programs and it, it feels cluttered to you, we always just recommend using these to kind of filter it out and organize it. Um, so this is another spot where you can start a new program. But first I wanna talk through the top here. Um, so programs is gonna be your whole program from start to finish with all of your phases. And then, I don't know why it's not letting me click here. All right. Phases is going to be like the specific phase within your program. And these are all templates. Um, so you can save templates for phases, workouts, blocks, and then you can save exercises. So that's all going to show up in these different tabs here. But just for language sake, um, phases is what we would call like your two to four week phase um, that you can save here. And then you can also create a new phase at the bottom. Um, workouts is your individual workout of that day. So same thing, these are all the templates. And then a block is your specific set of exercises within a workout. And then exercises is gonna be your individual exercise. Um, so within the exercise library, you can actually edit, um, you can change the videos. So if there's a, like a exercise that has a video that you don't like, or you wanna use something else for your clientele, you can click these three dots here and upload either a new um, video from your computer or you can import a video from YouTube. So if there's a video that explains something really well that you wanna share with your clients, um, you would just go there and click import from YouTube. You can also edit the name. So if you go here and tap this button, you can play around and change the name for an exercise. And then also you can go here um, and upload a new video. And the new video will override the existing one. So your clients will see whichever video you uploaded for that. Um, and then you can also create your own custom exercises. There's a couple different places to do that, but one of them is down here. You can hit new exercise and then type in an exercise name, or you can import from YouTube and import a video directly from YouTube to use. Um, okay. So that's a little overview of the library, but I wanna start by building a new program and walking everyone through some features within the builder. So to do that, I'm gonna hit new program. We're gonna give the program a name. I'm gonna call it, let's pretend we're doing a weightlifting competition and we are prepping. Um, so that's the program name. And then it's gonna bring up the different phase types. So you can build a phase from scratch, you can use a template phase, you can choose a phase from an existing program, um, or you can use our training engine. I'm gonna start by building a phase from scratch. So I'm just gonna tap new phase, give the phase a name, technique and volume, and then I'm gonna save that. So that'll bring me to a clean slate for my program. 
Um, so I like to start by adding all the days that I'm going to do. So I'm just going to do um, three days here. So I have my three days set up and I'm going to start by building out my first week before cloning it to add additional weeks. Um, so you can give your workout a name by tapping there. I'll call this snatch day. And then I'm going to add my first block. I'm so sorry if you can hear my dog out there. Um, so you have a couple different options here. New block is just going to be a new block of exercises that won't superset them. If you're doing blocks where you want the exercises to show up like back to back, then you're going to select a superset block. So when you first click it, it doesn't look like anything happened. You first have to give it a name and then it'll prompt you to select the exercises. Um, so I'm just going to create a warm up block. I hit enter and then it'll bring you to add an exercise. So from here, you're going to search for all of your exercises first and then hit insert and it will put them all in at the same time. Um, so I'm just going to start a little warm up by selecting some exercises. So once you click it, it's going to show up on the side here and then delete and then type in a new one. I'm just going to select some exercises. And... Okay, so once I have all of my exercises selected, I can hit insert and it will put them all into this block. Um, so this little symbol here shows that it's a superset. It's going away when I go over there, but the little like repeat symbol um, means that it's a superset block. So it'll show them all back to back for your clients. If it doesn't have that, it'll prompt them to complete all the sets first for one exercise before moving on to the next. Um, okay, so now that I have all my exercises in here, I'm gonna select the parameters by tapping on the exercise. And then from here, there's a drop down menu with all of the parameters. Uh, you can select up to three. So if you wanted to do multiple, um, like usually weight and reps, you would select that. Since this is a banded exercise, I'm just gonna do reps. And I'm gonna add in a few sets to start. We're gonna do 20 reps, and then I'm gonna tap apply to all because I'm going to do three sets of 20. So I'm applying it to all and then I'm just going to click out of it. Um, so let's say I wanted to do 20 reps, three sets of 20 for each exercise. I can actually hover over this little blue dot at the bottom and hit copy prescriptions and then I can just insert that into all of them. So I'd hit paste and replace. Yes, I would like to do that. Same thing here. Um, and then let's say for push-ups, I wanted to do less reps, so we're just going to do 10 push-ups. And then here I can actually, you can either add set, add set, and then apply to all or put in different reps. Um, if I know I want to do sets of 10, I can just clone the set and put in three sets there. So that is different ways to play with the parameters. Um, okay, so now that I have my warm-up block, I'm going to actually do the same warm-up for all three days. Um, so there's a couple of ways that I can do that. So you can actually clone a block up here and then just drag and drop it. So I can either do that for all three days, but let's say I wanna use the same warm up for all of my phases throughout this program. So I wanna save it as a template. So I'm gonna tap the three dots here. Anytime you see these three dots, it's a good idea to click them because they usually have a lot of information and options. Um, so I'm actually gonna save it as a template and we'll call it like the Olympic weightlifting warm up. Save, and then now it's there so I can edit it or add it to any block that I want. So this time I'm gonna go template block and then my templates, um, Olympic lifting warm up, owl warm up, cool. All right, so that is my warm up block. So that's in for all three days. Um, so now I'm gonna add my first working block. So this one's also going to be a superset, and we're going to do some snatch technique. Okay, so same thing. We'll bring up my um, tab to search for exercises. So I'm going to start with a snatch high pull, and then also if the if you search an exercise and it's not there, you can just quickly hit create new exercise. And it will take that same name that you searched for that didn't come up and create new exercise. 
Um, but sometimes you just have to play around with the wording. Like I typed in high pull snatch, but it's snatch high pull. Um, so sometimes it's just a matter of wording. Um, and then we're gonna do a hang snatch. So I have my two exercises in, um, and then same thing, I'm gonna tap it and then go into the parameters. So within the weight options, we have a few different settings. Um, so there's percent one rep max. So with this one, you'll have to have like a one rep max put in for the exercise for it to pull from that. Um, so if you had a high pulse, like a snatch high pull one rep max, it could take a percentage from that. But I'm actually going to use the next one, which is a linked one RME. Um, so because I don't have like a one rep max for a snatch high pull, I can link it to my snatch. And then as long as I have a snatch one rep max, it'll pull from that. Um, so this is super useful for something like an Olympic lift. Or let's say you have an athlete who always does sumo deadlifts and today you're doing conventional. And it's their first time doing conventional. So you want to link it to that to kind of get an idea of what their weight range is. Um, so it's just a good way to kind of pull up another percentage that's relevant to what you're doing. Um, so I'm going to add in my sets. I'm going to do four sets, all of three, apply to all. And then I would just play with the percentage. So we're going to do 85. Okay, so now I have my um, high pull weights all in there, and then that'll show up for each individual athlete as long as they do have that snatch um, one RME put in. And then for hang snatch, same thing, I'm gonna click it. Okay, so for this one, I can do a percent one RME um, because I do have a hang snatch max, let's say. Um, so same thing, I'm gonna add my sets. Five, 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 three, three. And we'll start at 50% and then go up from there. Um, but the other options in here, so we have the percent one rep max, the linked, and then percent body weight. As long as your athlete has a body weight inputted, it'll pull from that. Absolute is an absolute weight. Um, so if you have an athlete and you know exactly what weight you want them to lift, you can put it in. Or if you want to do this and put in zero or enter nothing, then the athlete can just put in like their own weight. Um, so that's a good option if you're if it's a different kind of exercise, like let's say you're doing like bicep curls where you're not going to do it to like a percentage or anything. You just want your athlete to go in and enter their own weight. Um, that's where absolute would be a good option. And then percent difficulty is similar to RPE, so like your rate of perceived exertion. Um, it'll give them a percentage. So if I click this, it'll have a little icon here that breaks it down. Um, so if you chose something like 75 to 84%, um, it would prompt with leaving two to three reps in the tank. And then once your athlete puts enter something for a percent difficulty, it'll pull from that the next time that they use it. Um, so it kind of works in live time, whereas the other percentages will work based off that one rep max and it won't change until the one rep max is changed. Um, okay, but I'm gonna stick to my percentages and then I'm just gonna add one more block um, just for time's sake. And then let's use one of these other ones. So as you can see, new block will just be your basic new block. We went through superset and then we have these different options here. Um, so if you hover over the information, it'll pull up what it is, but AMRAP is as many rounds as possible. EMOM is every minute on the minute, and then RFT is rounds for time. Um, so these are really nice because it's difficult to program like every minute on the minute um, without something like this. So I'm gonna use that and just tap EMOM, and then it's gonna be a fun squat EMOM. And we're gonna go for 10 minutes. So I'm gonna do 10 rounds. Enter, and then I'm gonna put in front squat. Okay, so for this one, um, I don't have to put in the sets because it's going every minute on the minute for 10 minutes. But let's say we're doing five reps and I'm gonna use the percent difficulty and we'll do about 70%. 
Okay, so I have my day one, um, not a complete day, but just for time's sake. And then going on to day two, let's say we're working on queens today. Okay, so I'm gonna add a block, um, but as you can see here, we do have the option for a template block. So I'm gonna work with that. So I would hit template block. Um, you can either look through the different templates here and see if there's something that sticks out to you. And then once you insert it, you can edit it. Um, but I'm gonna go into my templates and then insert a clean and jerk block. So I already have that here with the percentages that I wanna use. Um, so I'm gonna keep that, but if I wanted to edit it, I could go in here and just make any edits or add additional exercises. Um, the templates are super flexible. Okay, so let's pretend I have my full week complete. Um, so this is where I would then just clone this week into the three other weeks that I wanna use versus each week going in and recreating it. Um, so that would work if you were someone, like if you were doing a different workout every week, then you could just go week actions, add week, and it would add a blank week. Um, but because I want to progress off of this week, I'm going to clone the week a couple times. We'll make it three weeks. Um, and then from there, I can go in and see each week. So at the top here, you'll see week view. Um, this is a really cool feature because it makes progressing your exercises super easy. Um, so I'm, instead of week view, I'm going to go to load progression view. And this will show the same day over the course of your phase. So this shows three weeks um, and it's all day one. So I don't need to progress the warm up, but let's say I wanted to progress my snatch. Now I can kind of see it next to each other um, so I can see the percentages and how I wanna progress it. So if I'm looking at my high pull and I'm ending at 90% this week, let's say I wanna end at 95% the next week, it just makes it super easy to kind of go in and compare weeks and then let's say we're going for 100 i can kind of work back so this is probably one of my favorite features with bridge um because it is really nice just to be able to see your program as a whole over the course of the days and then let's you saw percentages so i don't have to do that again for the hang snatch but let's say with the front squat i want to keep the percentages but play with the reps could change the reps in there so that by the third week we're doing 10 reps um so again that's called load progression view and then the week view would just show each week and then you can toggle it between weeks one two and three up at the top here okay let me see what else Okay, so that's an overview of the builder. Um, so now let's say you're complete with your workout and you want to assign it to your athletes. Oh, I lost it. Here we go. So once you, if you go to the program library and hit your program, it kind of has its own little home screen. Um, okay, so this would show all of your phases. You can edit it from here if you want to hit add a phase. Um, you can see your like analyzation by highlighting this. Um, this is a really cool tool. Once you actually have weights and stuff in there, or if you do have weights, if you're assigning your athletes like percentages versus absolute and it's blank, it won't really show a lot. Um, but with percentages in there, it'll show the volume, intensity, and load, which is super cool. And then you can add a phase from there. Okay. So there's two ways to assign training. Um, we have a calendar format and then a playlist view. So I'll go through calendar first. So first you're gonna select your team and then your athletes. So if you wanna assign it to everyone, you can select all. And then from here, it's gonna say workouts on calendar or workouts as playlist. So a playlist view will just show the workouts kind of like as a playlist, it won't be on the calendar. So that way your athlete can just go in and click it and complete it kind of at their own, in their own order and without it being assigned to a certain day. Um, so if you have athletes that are on like a set schedule, workouts on the calendar is definitely like easier to follow. But if it's a little bit more lax or they're doing something like, you could add like a core workout and do that as a playlist where they can kind of go in and pick a day and kind of use it like supplementally. 
Um, but I'm going to show you workouts on the calendar. So you can select if you have five training days, it'll say five training days. It'll tell you to select whatever amount of training days you have. And then the calendar will go from Sunday to Saturday. So if you wanted to do starting on a Friday, it would have to be, you have to start on like one of the days between Sunday and Saturday, because that's how the week goes. Um, so I'm going to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then from here, you can select the week that you'd like to, your program to start on. So we're going to start it next week. And then I'll hit next and it's going to assign it to all of these people. And then on the side here, if they have active programs, um, you can either keep their programs active or replace them before assigning it. Okay, so it's been assigned to all of these people. Um, you can play around with the calendar within here. So if you wanted to drag and drop and change the workout days, you can do that on the program um, like homepage. And then your athletes, from their point of view, they'll be able to go into their, like if they miss a workout, they can tap that day. Like let's say I wanted to do yesterday's workout today, I would just hit yesterday's workout on my app as an athlete and then move it to today. So it'll prompt them to move, to move it to today. Um, so that's a good option there as well. And then cancel that. Okay. So I'm going to show you now how to make it as a playlist. So same thing, I would go assign training, select the team, all the athletes, and then work out as playlist, and then assign it. So another difference here with the playlist workout, it'll keep going like it won't with the calendar workout once your athletes complete it it'll get moved to the completed folder um with the playlist you'll have to go in and remove the athletes like once they're done or if you don't want them to have access to it anymore um so that's a difference there but yeah that's how to assign let me see if there's anything else i'm gonna go over um i think let's see if you saw me do this before up here on these three dots, I cloned the workout to then assign it as a playlist. So once your workout is assigned as either a calendar or a playlist, you can't go in and edit it, but you can clone the program and reassign it. Um, so that's up here with these three dots. And I just hit clone and then it just makes a copy and it says copy up here too. So that's easy to follow. Um, same thing with this little analyze tab, it'll analyze the program as a whole. And then the bottom one was analyzing the phase as a whole. So if you're really into your data, um, these are really good tools. When you see that, you can click in Analyze Your Workouts. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Lauren, do you have anything else that I didn't cover? No, I think that's good. Um, we did get a question come in, um, so we can start with that. And then while we go through this question, if anyone else has others, um, please send it in to us and we can then read it next and get that one answered as well. Um, so this question, I'll just read it to you, Emily, and then we can um, go through the answer. So it says, if you design a program using absolute weight, but want to assign it to more than one athlete, what's the most efficient way to accomplish this? For example, um, I have a couple that does personal training and um, they want to do the same exercises, but prescribe weight differently. Okay. So I would say if you're I would, Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I would probably lean towards still using percent difficulty, but um, I would like to hear what you think too, Emily. I was just going to say for um, like, if you have specific weights for an athlete, you can make a copy of the program like with their name on it and then make like individual weight weight recommendations in the absolute. Yeah, that is a good point. So um, yeah, that's definitely an option is assigning two different programs. Um, and then the good thing about percent difficulty, which is often missed um, is that we do show absolute weights to the client after they complete it the first time. So where Emily was showcasing the percentage difficulty and what they'd see the first time they complete the exercise, um, for example, leave to two to three reps in the tank, that is just the first time they're completing that exercise with percent difficulty for the first time. So then 
let's say they're now doing it the second time, um, their front squat with percent difficulty prescribed, it will then show them the absolute weight, um, which can always be adjusted because clients can input um, different weight if they used it differently that day. Um, and our system will take into the account the weight they used, the reps assigned, percentage difficulty, as well as any test results that are entered for that exercise to prescribe the um, absolute weight. Um, and what if you do choose to do this, you can estimate the weight. So Emily, if you click estimate weight at the above the notes section, um, yeah, you can like leave them all checked. I think that's fine. It will show you if the athlete does have data, it will show you um, under the estimated weight column, what weight the athlete will be prescribed just so you have that visibility and you can make adjustments if you don't feel that it would be correct. So it's a really great way to prescribe individual weights kind of at mass without having to create multiple programs. But if you do lean towards wanting to prescribe using absolutes, um, Emily's suggestion of cloning the program and adding in the name is definitely a great solution as well. Um, another thing I forgot to highlight is the add alternative exercise. Now that I'm on the screen, I'm seeing it. Um, so this is a good option to add progressions or regressions. So let's say I have the front squat for the barbell and I want to add the option to do like a goblet squat instead. I could type in goblet squat and then insert and then athletes will see this option. So if they can't do front squat for whatever reason, um, they'll see the option to do a kettlebell squat, which is a really good, um, it's just a really good option for making it more accessible for more people. So you can do that with all of your exercises if you wanna show the different progressions or regressions, if you have like a wide um, variety of clients doing the same program. So that's another good thing to highlight there. And you can do multiple um, alternate exercises as well. Just wanna throw that yeah. in. Definitely um, a feature that a lot of our users are enjoying using. Um, Okay, so I don't see any other questions as of right now, but um, I did want to make sure we had time to highlight that we are hosting another webinar um, in two weeks. So I think it's two weeks from now on the 29th. Yeah. Um, it will be at the same time. Um, if you do have time conflict, I do recommend still signing up for the webinar because um, as you know, with this one, we record them. Uh, and we um, send it out to the registrant list. So you still can get access very easily to the webinar, even if um, you're not available at that, that exact time. But it is a Q&A webinar. So um, please submit questions beforehand so we can go through them. Uh, but it's also, I think, will be a really great place to learn more about how other trainers are using the platform and, and hear kind of the questions they have as well because uh, it will kind of get us all outside of the box and what we're thinking about. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll do one more check to see if any other questions have come in. Um, okay, I still don't see any. So I think we are probably good to wrap it up here. Um, and we, oh, okay, we do have one. Okay, um, they asked about how to edit templates. Oh, okay. Let me pull it up. So, so maybe show editing a template within here and then editing a template you saved from the actual library as well. Okay. Um, I think I go, okay, yeah. So I'm gonna go, wait, to move this. My templates, I don't, wait, I might need you to walk me through So this. if you wanna edit like an actual template that you've saved, you'd go to the library, but like if you insert any template that you've created, it becomes editable within the program. Um, so then you just be editing it normally. So maybe we should show how to edit a template that's saved. From the library? Yeah, so we'll go into the library and then, um, yeah, so we can edit a block template. So when Emily went through these tabs, these are all um, the tabs where templates are saved. So clicking into any template is where you can then edit it. There we go. Um, 
And so you can just go in and make these changes and then save it. Um, but it is important to note that it doesn't like retroactively update where that template is. So if Emily had this warm up block in a program already, it won't change within that program. It will just be for like future use. This template will be updated. Um, and then what, if you go back to yeah the blocks tab, another and then if you could click on the exos um, tab on the left. Another thing that sometimes can be confusing for people with editing templates is if you click on this. Um, you have to first clone the exos templates in order to edit them. So that's why you don't it looks a little bit differently here. Um, so Emily just cloned it and now she has that edit option. And, and the work automatically saves. So once she makes her edits, she can go back and it's saved and ready to use. Um, but great question. I hope that answered that. Um, we can wait um, for another minute here to see if there are any other questions that have come up. But then if you guys are in Bridge exploring and you do have questions, please bring them to our webinar next uh, on two t Wednesdays on the 29th. <laughs> two weeks. Two weeks. Um, okay, cool. Um, I think that we should be good. We will send out the webinar. Um, and you guys can reference it. If questions come up, feel free to shoot them our way or please bring them to the webinar. Um, and we will hopefully see you all there. Thanks so much for joining everyone. Yeah, thank you.